KPMG's experts were rolling in money. They had struck gold. Hey. A scheme to hide the fortune of some of their wealthiest Canadian clients behind the Isle of Man fortresses in the utmost secrecy. Personne ne dira rien. Motus est bouche cousue. Comment l'agence de revenus va-t-elle le détecter? But today, customers reveal how the sham worked. C'est la réalité ou de la fiction? La fiction. Je conserve le contrôle absolu sur mon argent. Tout le reste n'est qu'une façade. Thanks to KPMG, these multimillionaires never had to face prosecution in court. On parle ici d'évasion fiscale, qui est un crime grave, et c'était la cause parfait pour se rendre devant les tribunaux. Instead, Canada Revenue Agency offered them an amnesty. Permettre une amnistie fiscale, tout à fait inadmissible. Who are these mysterious clients? Our investigation leads us to some of the wealthiest Canadians, protected by one of the most influent accounting firms in the country. Madrid, one of the great European capitals, rich in cultural events. The perfect tourist destination to attract tax experts from around the world to the International Fiscal Association Conference. One of the major sponsors of the conference is accounting giant KPMG. On the agenda, five days of meetings, lectures and discussions on international taxation issues. The use of tax havens by the wealthy and multinationals has become very controversial, and experts know the tide is turning. As the Panama Papers and now the Bahama Papers have shown us there is growing resentment against the global tax structure, especially in the context of tax havens. In this war opposing tax authorities to the wealthy, the largest accounting firms are ready for battle. One of KPMG's top associates was very clear in this 2015 corporate video. If we just let regulators, if we let other stakeholders define what the tax landscape's going to look like, I'm not so sure that it's going to be right, frankly, for our clients, uh, for us, but, but realistically for society. I think we can help build the tax system of the future, and I look forward to being a huge part of that. L'influence des cabinets comptables me paraît forte ici, dans le sens qu'ils sont présents à beaucoup, beaucoup d'événements qui sont capables d'influencer pour des changements législatifs. International tax specialist Marwa Risky says big accounting firms are at the core of the problems of tax avoidance and tax evasion. C'est eux qui montent la structure et c'est eux, en plus, qui sollicitent les clients pour leur vendre de telles structures. Some 20 years ago, the big accounting firms were competing to create tax strategies that were increasingly profitable, but also increasingly risky. I think there was a, a perception that they'd never get caught. Tax lawyer Michael Hammersley was working for KPMG in the U.S. at the time. The environment was... Uh was transactions that were being sold that were very risky and were not representing the true facts of the transaction. It was a business decision and whether or not it complied with the law. That the, the detriment of uh, breaking the law was basically a slap on the wrist and you could get filthy rich doing it. In Canada too, KPMG's tax experts came up with a very lucrative offshore scheme. According to internal documents, targeted clients should have more than $5 million to invest offshore. The pitch was enticing, no income tax to pay on capital gains and guaranteed confidentiality. For every sale, KPMG would make at least $100,000. Internally, the firm trumpeted its successful sales, lauding Serge Bilodeau, a Montreal partner. A Canadian businessman agreed to reveal anonymously the content of his confidential meetings with a KPMG partner. Je lui ai dit, je veux payer le moins d'impôts, ou si c'est possible, ne pas en payer du tout. 
Puis il m'a répondu, « J'ai bien une idée pour toi. » Et il m'a expliqué en termes simples, « Ton argent va aller dans un paradis fiscal. Il va aller à l'île de Mans. » The Isle of Man is located in the Irish Sea. The corporate tax rate is 0%. KPMG has an office in the capital, Douglas. KPMG creates an offshore company for its client. The firm also recruits two Isle of Man residents. They will be nominee shareholders. The Canadian client gives over his fortune to the offshore company. Ce client va transférer ses actions en les donnant sur papier, et je tiens à préciser le terme sur papier, vers une entreprise écran qui va être située à l'île de Mans. Il lui donne, donc ça ne lui appartient plus. The client declares nothing to the Canada Revenue Agency since technically he's no longer the owner. Over time, his fortune grows. When he wants to bring back some funds to Canada, all he has to do is ask the company to make him a gift, a tax-free gift. But according to law professor André Larot, it's all smoke and mirrors. Lorsque les contribuables ont remis de l'argent à la société de l'île de Mans, des millions de dollars dans les circonstances, il était très clair pour ces personnes que la somme devait leur revenir éventuellement. Ce n'est pas un don. Donc, la question est, est-ce qu'il s'agit d'une situation de fraude? Quelle personne saine d'esprit va payer 100 000 à KPMG pour signer un document qui, en définitive, va donner tout son argent? Est-ce logique? Non, ça n'a aucun sens. Ça doit cacher quelque chose. Ça doit cacher la véritable intention de l'opération. Even if he's not a shareholder, the multimillionaire keeps control of his fortune by sitting on the board of directors. Si je n'étais pas d'accord avec une transaction, il n'y avait pas de transaction. J'avais le dernier mot. J'avais un droit de veto. To create an even more opaque screen, KPMG recommended their clients ask a trusted friend to sit on the board for them. KPMG's scheme also included a secret agreement that would give the client or his friend an extraordinary power. At any time, they could liquidate the company and bring back the money to Canada. Au bout du compte, J'ai toujours le contrôle absolu sur mon argent. Tout le reste, chaque bout de papier, est une façade pour donner l'apparence que je n'ai pas de contrôle sur la compagnie. Mais dans les faits, je l'ai. Qu'est-ce que vous pensez en voyant ça? Mais écoutez, déjà, après avoir lu les documents, c'était clair pour moi que l'ensemble... Euh, de la structure était dans le but de faire de l'évasion fiscale. Mais après euh, entendre ce témoignage, qui est extraordinaire dans le sens que la preuve est faite, ici, on a vraiment un stratagème qui est dans le but d'éluder l'impôt. In an email, KPMG emphatically disputes that this is a reliable statement and says that compliance were explicitly informed that they give up control of the assets. To this day, neither the KPMG clients nor the firm itself have been charged with criminal tax evasion. Au niveau criminel, on parle d'intention. Et si on a un témoignage euh, qui parle clairement de l'intention tant du contribuable mais aussi des planificateurs fiscaux. J'ai posé la question. Vous êtes certain que c'est correct Il m'a dit "Ouais, c'est correct. On l'a déjà fait." Tu n'as qu'à faire ce qu'on dit et tout va bien aller. J'ai dû signer une entente de non-divulgation, de, de confidentialité. Il ne fallait jamais que je parle de ça à quiconque. Comment l'agence du revenu va-t-elle détecter ça? Indeed, Canadian tax authorities did not detect anything until 2012. In Victoria, the Cooper family lived in luxury homes 
but they declared such small incomes that they paid very little or no taxes at all. They even claimed tax credits, yet they sat on a whopping $26 million. The revenue agency slapped them with a $6 million penalty. The case is before the Tax Court of Canada. I think, you, again, you got to speak to KPMG. Everything was hidden behind an offshore company structure in the Isle of Man. That's where we pursued our investigation with Professor Laroux. We were met by a wall of silence. I have no further comments. No more comments to make, gentlemen. I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you to leave now. I'm sorry, I can't actually discuss that with you. It's, almost, it's confidential, so yeah, okay. I'm sorry. L'Agence du revenu ne retrouvera jamais les vrais bénéficiaires. La seule façon de les avoir, c'est d'obtenir la liste des clients de KPMG et d'obtenir donc les gens qui en ont été les vrais bénéficiaires. In Vancouver, the revenue agency's investigators obtained a court order in 2013. KPMG was instructed to hand over the names of its clients, but it refused and appealed the ruling. And then nothing. For over two years, the case was stalled. Je crois que ça n'a pas abouti devant la Cour parce que pendant ce temps-là, certains hauts fonctionnaires négociaient avec KPMG pour une amnistie. Behind closed doors, KPMG was making a deal with the revenue agency so that its rich clients would not face justice. KPMG's wealthy clients could still enjoy life and not worry much, even though the Canada Revenue Agency had set its sights on them. The powerful accounting firm had achieved a remarkable feat. It had negotiated a secret deal for them, which we've obtained from an anonymous source. Clients only had to pay the back taxes at a reduced interest rate. No penalty and no prosecution. In exchange, the revenue agency required its offer remain strictly confidential. Ça me laisse sans mots cette clémence. Euh, on ne parle pas d'une petite euh, évasion fiscale, on parle de montants assez importants. En fait, le message que ça envoie, c'est que la loi ne s'applique pas à tous. In Ottawa, our revelations came as a bombshell. Les Canadiens en ont assez de ces fling fangs qui permettent aux multimillionnaires de ne pas payer leurs impôts et de se faire traiter aux petits oignons par le gouvernement. Ce gouvernement croit en l'équité fiscale où tous les Canadiens payent leur juste part d'impôts et sont traités équitablement par le système the fiscal The new fédéral. Liberal Prime Minister was ready to reconsider the agreement reached under the Conservative government. What decisions made under a previous government, uh, if they're erroneous, we'll look into them for sure. A month later, Liberals increased the agency's budget and announced new measures. J'annonce la mise en place d'un comité consultatif indépendant sur l'observation à l'étranger, qui se penchera sur l'évasion fiscale à l'étranger et la planification fiscale abusive. Seven independent experts will advise the minister, two of them from Quebec, tax consultant Alan Lantier and tax law professor Marie-Pierre Allard. C'était ma compréhension que ce comité était formé suite à l'affaire KPMG qui était sortie là, publiquement quelques semaines avant. The Liberals allowed the Finance Committee to study the amnesty offered to the KPMG clients. Finally, the matter was going to be brought to light. But in fact, the opposite happened. Uh, this morning, a uh, word study of Canada Revenue Agency's efforts to come back combat tax avoidance and evasion or with uh, KPMG. The first witness, KPMG's former global head of tax, Greg Weeb. Who were the CRA employees that negotiated the amnesty deal with KPMG and your clients? I'm not allowed to talk about any aspect of the, of the settlement because it's uh, subject to settlement privilege. Who were your main contacts, the CRA? As I said earlier, that's one aspect of this conversation which I unfortunately cannot get into. Je vous dirais qu'on n'a pas appris grand-chose parce qu'encore une fois, plusieurs des éléments euh, qui auraient probablement pu guider euh, le comité dans son travail, on n'a pas pu avoir accès sous prétexte de confidentialité. Greg Weeb says the Isle of Man scheme was completely legal at the time. As is the case with all our tax plans, it fully complied with all applicable tax laws. We conducted extensive internal and external due diligence. Putting some investment in offshore company and getting back 
here to Canada as a gift to, uh, from a company to another company. Do you think that, that kind of behavior is moral? We determined back in 2003 that that was something that we were no longer prepared to uh, uh, implement as an organization. It was a very different time. I mean, we used to smoke in, 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 in restaurants in 2006. We used to text, you know, in our cars up until two years ago. Times change and we change with it. Ce n'était pas plus légal en 1999 qu'aujourd'hui en 2017 de faire de la fraude fiscale. Et non, la seule chose qui a changé, c'est l'opinion publique qui regarde davantage les crimes économiques et les crimes fiscaux. C'est ça qui a changé, c'est l'opinion publique. What was the total revenue received by KPMG for this particular package offered? Uh, the 16 uh, implementations, the average fee was around $100,000. Uh, uh, so the total fees that we would have, uh, would have received for implementing this particular plan was uh, just shy of $1.6 million range. It was a fixed fee uh, per implementation. It was not a, not a contingent fee. Or but his testimony is contradicted by an internal marketing document filed in court. The accounting firm states that annual fees, up to 15% of the tax savings, could be billed. According to the revenue agency, the Coopers paid fees to KPMG until 2008. In total, $300,000. KPMG says that these are only allegations from the revenue agency and that the information given by Greg Weeb to the House of Commons committee was correct. Ça démontre effectivement que un ils ont menti aux parlementaires devant la commission et de deux, ils ont encore profité de leur stratagème fiscal. Non seulement ils incitent à l'évasion fiscale, mais en retirent des bénéfices. A few weeks after KPMG's testimony, it's the revenue minister's turn to answer MP's questions about the secret amnesty. Il n'y a pas eu Il n'y aura pas et il n'y aura jamais d'amnistie. Si nous avons la lettre présentement qui spécifie que les gens qui se déclarent, qui déclarent avoir utilisé ce mécanisme, ne feront face à aucune pénalité alors qu'ils devraient faire face aux pénalités, il s'agit au moins dans la langue française d'une amnistie. Monsieur Caron, euh, je suis de nationalité aussi française que vous euh, et je vous dis que le terme « amnistie » n'est pas un terme qui est utilisé, il ne sera pas utilisé. Si c'est pas une amnistie, c'est quoi? Il s'agit effectivement, contrairement à ce que la ministre indique, d'une amnistie fiscale, c'est-à-dire de permettre à une personne de ne pas payer sa pénalité, de ne pas payer la majorité des intérêts. The minister even refused to confirm the authenticity of the letter offering the amnesty to the KPMG clients. Vous avez fait une enquête sur la lettre pour voir si elle était authentique? Il m'est impossible de confirmer l'authenticité du document. Alors, nous avons une lettre qui supposément n'existe pas, mais que nous savons que 16 clients, euh, enfin 16 euh, lettres d'entente ont été signées avec euh, 25 clients. C'est ce qui a été confirmé par, euh, par l'enquête de Radio-Canada et de CBC. Est-ce que, est que vous pouvez confirmer que c'est effectivement le cas? Je ne peux pas vous confirmer l'authenticité du document. C'est probablement l'échange le plus surréel que j'ai eu depuis mon entrée au Parlement. On joue sur les mots, on joue sur la sémantique, on refuse de parler d'amnistie, on refuse d'identifier, mais on refuse de nier l'authenticité d'une lettre. The committee then calls a series of independent experts. But on the day of the hearing, they can't get in the room. The committee is meeting in camera. J'ai attendu. Et lorsque, donc, on a eu la permission d'entrer dans le local, je me suis installé. Call the uh, meeting to, uh, to order. And... All of a sudden, chair of the committee, Liberal Wayne Easter, orders experts not to talk about the KPMG scandal. That if I believe a, uh, a witness uh, or a member uh, is uh, moving in a direction that, uh, that could have implications on the court case, uh, then I will uh, ask their mic to be cut and, uh, uh, and go to the next question. Je trouve ça totalement aberrant qu'on m'ait invité et en spécifiant dans l'invitation qu'on qu voulait que je parle de KPMG et l'île de Mans, et que tout d'un coup, ma présence devenait tout à fait inutile puisqu'on ne voulait plus que je parle de ce domaine-là. Mr. LaRue. Good morning to you all. Bonjour, mon nom est André Larue. Je suis professeur de droit fiscal à l'Université Laval. J'ai accompagné aussi Radio-Canada à l'île de Mans 
pour euh, l'enquête de l'année dernière. J'ai débuté mon intervention et j'ai choisi délibérément de mentionner le nom de KPMG. Puisqu'on m'a demandé de venir ici pour parler de KPMG à l'île de Mans, je vous soumettrai bien humblement que la stratégie mise en place par KPMG ne tombe pas, ne cadre pas. I would prefer you really didn't get into the uh, KPMG uh, uh, case. That is the one that is before the courts. If you want to talk in generalities of tax avoidance, that's fine, but I don't want to go down a path that's going to cause trouble. Uh, Mr. Chairman, well, I'm just, I was invited to speak about KPMG. KPMG a eu l'opportunité de livrer sa version des faits. Comme spécialiste de fiscalité, où j'ai des choses à dire concernant les aspects juridiques de cette planification, mais je pense qu'il aurait été seulement opportun que le comité entende. Why did the committee chair make such a topsy-turvy? A couple of days earlier, KPMG's lawyers sent a letter to the committee invoking the sub judice rule, a rule that says one should not interfere in the judicial process. But Wayne Easter says the letter had no influence on him. Uh, the, uh, the advice uh, that we looked at was uh, from Parliamentary Legal Counsel and how far you should or should not go. Je suis un peu surpris qu'on ait invoqué la règle du subiudité pour essentiellement là, baïonner les experts dans cette affaire-là. Le Parlement peut euh, poser les questions qu'il veut, convoquer les témoins qu'il veut et euh, n'est pas assujetti au contrôle des tribunaux euh, sur des questions de cette nature-là. According to Professor Gramont, the committee aired. Ça conduit à une situation un peu bancale où euh, les représentants d'une des parties, si vous voulez, là, euh, ont pu s'exprimer, mais pas, pas les autres. Là, où un seul point de vue a été entendu. Ce que ça me donne comme message, c'est qu'on ne veut pas que l'information sorte. C'était, je pense, le début de la fin de l'étude euh, sur KVMG et l'île de Mans au niveau du comité des finances parce qu'il était impossible d'avoir un autre son de cloche. No further business. Meeting adjourned. And what happened with the independent advisory committee announced by the minister? The names of the two Quebecers, Alan Lantier and Marie-Pierre Allard, were nowhere to be found in the report published last December. J'ai démissionné du comité euh, quelques, semaines avant, euh, quelques semaines avant le dépôt du, euh, du rapport. Et pourquoi? Euh, J'avais euh, certaines réserves par rapport au fonctionnement du comité et par rapport au sujet qui était abordé par le comité. In a letter addressed to the minister, the professor calls into question the independence of the committee. She writes, senior officials at the Canada Revenue Agency and the president of the committee determine the agenda, the subjects discussed and the issues raised. Est-ce que vous avez pu au moins aborder le sujet de KPMG? Euh, ce sujet-là n'a jamais été à l'agenda, mais je ne peux pas en dire plus sur les discussions du comité parce que j'ai une attente de confidentialité. Moi, ça me préoccupe particulièrement que les deux représentants du Québec aient démissionné. Lorsqu'on prend toute l'affaire KPMG, on se rend compte qu'il y a peut-être ici une histoire de camouflage. For years, KPMG's tax experts sold their scheme to wealthy clients, helping them hiding their fortunes from the Canada Revenue Agency. How many multimillionaires bought the scheme and who are they? The accounting firm claims it sold the scheme 16 times, but the names of the clients were never revealed publicly with the exception of a Victoria family, the Coopers, for whom KPMG created Ogrel Company in the Isle of Man. La plupart des Canadiens, je pense qu'ils aussi veulent savoir c'est qui les contribuables. Si le tout avait été fait devant les tribunaux, aujourd'hui, la lumière serait faite. C'est le nom des compagnies et tout. In the Isle of Man, we found clues in the corporate registry allowing us to identify several Canadians involved. We looked for companies with articles of association that were identical to those of the Cooper family's company. Some unusual articles drew our attention, like this one, forbidding administrators to meet in Canada. We found more than 20 companies this way, 
one of them, Sojeki Company Limited, created in 2000. A Canadian sits on the board of directors, Frederick William Ben, an administrator at Gros Vidéotron Limité. Sojeki is also the name of a Canadian holding company that belongs to the Chagnon family, founders of communication giant Vidéotron. Why would the Chagnons buy the KPMG scheme? On ne crée pas par pur hasard une société à l'île de Nantes tout à coup. Puis on ne paye pas 100 000 dollars par pur hasard pour avoir accès à une structure fiscale. We find other revealing clues. Sojeki was registered in the Isle of Man on February 3rd, 2000. The same day, in Barbados, another tax haven, Sojeki Holding and Sojeki Investments were created, two other companies linked to the Chagnons. Four days later, in Montreal, a press conference sent shockwaves across Quebec's political landscape. Uh, this is a great day for Canada. It's a great day for Quebec. And it's a very exciting one for our companies. The Chagnon family announced a merger of Groupe Vidéotron with Rogers Communications, owned by Ontario billionaire Ted Rogers, a transaction valued at $5.6 billion. Cette fusion avec Rogers, pour nous, on voit d'énormes avantages pour les actionnaires, pour les employés et pour les clients. And great benefits to the Chagnon's own pocketbook. Since the transaction involved the swap of shares, Chagnon could defer payment of the capital gain tax, pushing back a tax bill that could have reached over $700 million. Was Sojeki in the Isle of Man part of the Chagnon's tax planning? On peut inférer qu'il y avait une structure qui a été mise en place, une structure potentielle afin de peut-être esquiver les impôts euh, qui auraient été perçus suite au gain capital qui auraient été réalisé. But the Chagnons faced an unexpected challenge from the Quebec government. Moi, quand j'ai entendu la première fois que Rogers allait euh, accaparer l'héritage extraordinaire de l'entrepreneur Chagnon, euh, j'ai été atterré. Je dis, il ne faut pas que ça se fasse. J'étais ministre des Finances à l'époque. Ce qui ne me donne pas le droit de dire à la Caisse de dépôt, faites ceci et cela. Ce que j'avais le droit de faire, et la loi le dit, c'est de m'informer. Alors, je me suis informé la caisse. Je me suis tellement informé qu'ils se sont doutés de ce que j'avais en tête. The Caisse de dépôt, a shareholder of Vidéotron, used its veto power to stall the transaction. The Caisse then asked Pierre Calpilado, owner of Québécois, to make a counter-offer, at first rejected by the Chagnons. Quand on compare euh, l'offre de Rogers, pour les actionnaires de Vidéotron, elle est nettement plus intéressante. But Québécois' offer was in cash. The Chagnons would have had to immediately pay taxes on the capital gains. Même si Québécois a offert une offre plus alléchante, elle n'était pas plus alléchante au niveau fiscal. C'est-à-dire que l'offre de Québécois faisait qu'à la famille Chagnon payait des impôts. Faced with opposition from the caisse, the Chagnons retreated. On April 27, 2000, they abandoned their Isle of Man company without having used it. By email, Claude Chagnon confirms that no assets or funds were transferred to the Isle of Man company. Seven days later, the Lucie and André Chagnon Foundation was registered with the Canada Revenue Agency. The foundation received a large part of the revenues generated by the sale of Vidéotron to Québécois, a tax strategy that didn't hurt the Chagnon's image as they became prominent philanthropists. Among the other Isle of Man companies, we find Gask Investments, created in 2001. Our research suggests it is linked to Ted Rogers' nephew, David Robinson. He was for many years a vice president at Rogers Communications. He is now a senior vice president at the Rogers Bank. Robinson declined to respond to our emails and phone messages. Snow was created in 2004. Two Quebecers are linked to it. Omer Lorty, a real estate entrepreneur who spends winters in Florida. According to his notary, he settled with the Canada Revenue Agency and Revenu Québec. The other is André Durand, a former kitchen counter contractor. 
In the letter, Durand told us he was simply a nominee for Lorty. I never transferred any assets, but was only a figurehead to help out, he says. The company Burim is related to confectioners from Winnipeg. The Burke family, owner of the Nutty Club factory, established more than 100 years ago. Its president, Jim Burt, admits KPMG approached him. He says that he didn't buy the scheme. One of his sons shows up as a director of the offshore company. Some documents suggest that SKH is linked to Ontario billionaire Vic Dezen, a recipient of the Order of Canada. He's involved in commercial real estate and the plastic industry north of Toronto. The Dezen family is investing $10 million in investment. In 2012, SKH was transferred to St. Kitts and Nevis, a Caribbean tax haven. The new address of SKH turns out to be the same as the luxury resort owned by Vic Dezen. He too declined to answer our questions. C'est des personnes qui aiment avoir une image de grand philanthrope, mais cette image est au frais des contribuables et ils privent le trésor de fonds publics, de fonds pour financer notre système public. One of the directors of CalFAR 43 is Richard Garneau, the actual CEO of Resolute, Quebec's largest forest industry company. By email, he writes that his role with this corporation was a private matter that preceded his association with Resolute. He says he cannot disclose any confidential information regarding others and that he and his family didn't receive any personal benefit. If Richard Garneau is just a front, which wealthy Canadian is hiding behind CalFAR 43? The mystery remains. Last fall, tax experts from around the world got a taste of Madrid's legendary nightlife. The annual conference of the International Fiscal Association of which KPMG is one of the major sponsors, organized lavish events at some of Madrid's landmarks. The sumptuous Prado Museum was rented for a cultural evening. Among the participants to that event, Judge Denis Pelletier of the Federal Court of Appeal. His court hears appeals from the tax court. His spokesperson first denied the judge ever attended hospitality events, including the one at the Prado, because his wife was not feeling well. Yet, here they are. After revealing we had shot this video, his spokesperson admitted he attended the events and said that the initial confusion was due to miscommunication. Two days later, there was a private party, by invitation only, on one of the most exclusive terraces in the Spanish capital, The Roof. The event was entirely paid by the Canadian branch of the law firm Dentons. Marwa Risky attended the conference, but not the private cocktail. Euh, des soirées sur les terrasses des grands hôtels 5 étoiles, euh, la, la vue à couper le souffle. C'est des soirées qui sont très onéreuses pour le cabinet qui l'organise. On n'organise pas des, euh, des grandes soirées juste pour le plaisir. Habituellement, c'est pour des outils de marketing, faire la promotion de son cabinet. Dentons, formerly Fraser Milner, was the firm that provided legal advice in 1999 to KPMG, validating the Isle of Man scheme. Among the participants attending Denton's party was another Canadian judge, Randall Bocock of the tax court. He is the management judge in the case involving KPMG's Isle of Man scheme and the Cooper family. Honnêtement, ça... je suis un peu surprise. Très surprise même. Lorsque vous savez qu'il y a un dossier qui est en cours, vous devez éviter absolument de vous placer dans une situation où est-ce que la confiance du public euh, pourrait être sapée. Même si on peut croire que le juge n'a eu aucune conversation dans ce cocktail, fort probablement, mais, mais ce n'est pas la... 
c'est pas le fait qu'il y en ait eu, qu'il y en ait eu ou non, c'est pas ça qui est important. Il faut pas qu'il se place, ne doit pas se placer dans une situation où il risque d'être soumis à une influence ou même à une apparence d'influence. And that's how it's spelled out in the Canadian Judicial Council's Code of Conduct. Professor Larrault believes the Chief Justice of the Tax Court of Canada should call his judges to order. Définitivement, le juge en chef, Rossiter, doit émettre une directive à ses juges de ne pas participer à de tels cocktails, puisque l'image de la justice est alors en péril. But the Chief Justice does not agree. In an email, he says that Judge Bocock did not put himself in a situation of conflict of interest by briefly attending a reception that was open to all participants of the conference. At another tax conference in Calgary a couple of months later, far from condemning the practice, the Chief Justice encouraged it, boasting he would himself continue to attend hospitality events. Ça ne mérite aucun applaudissement. C'est troublant, les paroles qui ont été prononcées par ce juge. Je pense que le conseil de magistrature devrait se pencher sur cette question. In the United States, the authorities brought KPMG to justice for selling abuse-ridden tax shelters during the same period as the Isle of Man scheme in Canada. We simply can't tolerate flagrant abuse of the law and of professional standards by tax professionals, particularly those associated with so-called blue-chip firms like KPMG. Tax lawyer Michael Hammersley worked for KPMG in the U.S. In 2003, he became a whistleblower against his former employer. I eventually refused to endorse the what I believe to be illegal conduct of KPMG tax partners involved in the audit. Shortly after the the professionals lost their moral and professional responsibility compass. And they thought, and I think the consequences were far more severe than they anticipated. In the U.S., eight senior KPMG executives were charged. Three of them went to jail. The accounting firm was fined $456 million. Les grands cabinets ont tellement de capacités financières que les millions de dollars de pénalité ne suffisent plus à contrer, en fait, à contrer leur imagination fertile. Et la seule sanction possible qui va pouvoir freiner l'élan de ces gens est la privation de liberté. Et on parlera davantage donc de peine d'emprisonnement. C'est la seule façon qu'on va arriver à, des, à un nettoyage, finalement, de notre fiscalité. In Canada, KPMG and their accountants never faced justice. The firm is still awarded millions of dollars in contracts every year by the federal government. Alors, je suis très inconfortable avec un bureau qui, d'une part, fait la promotion d'abris fiscaux, d'évasion fiscale, et d'autre part, qui soumissionne sur des contrats publics. KPMG maintains that its scheme was very carefully developed and reviewed, and that it complied with the laws. Some say the firm should be under police investigation for its scheme and for its dealings with the Canada Revenue Agency. La réponse aujourd'hui adéquate, c'est deux choses. Une enquête indépendante par la GRC pour comprendre qu'est-ce qui est arrivé dans cette entente qui a eu lieu entre KPMG et la RC, mais aussi le gouvernement a le pouvoir d'avoir une enquête publique sur cette question. The identity of the true owners of some of the Isle of Man companies still remains a mystery. Most of the offshore structures have now been liquidated. Because of the amnesty brokered by KPMG, some of these multimillionaires won't have to face justice. For now, they remain untouchable.